What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we will be fixing all the mistakes from last week's video with a new Y, some new piping, and I found a really unique way to ground all the static out. So real quick, let's look at a couple clips from last week's video. The Y here you can see is backwards, and this copper wire that I tried to ground the system out did not work. So I read over a bunch of the comments on that video, and here's what I came up with. Okay, so we're back at the dust collector, and there's two main parts that I want to talk about here. So a lot of people in the comments suggested different ways that I could fix both the static and turning the Y around on this. And first things first, I want to thank everybody that did drop a comment below on that last video giving me ideas and letting me know their thoughts on what I should do to fix these problems. So the first thing in this comments that a lot of people said was that this Y is backwards. And I'll agree, this is backwards. The problem with putting it the other way, so if I take a new Y and turn it around that way, this feed can still go straight into the cyclone. And then if the feed can come in through here from the miter saw, it wouldn't have to make that steep angle. It could just go this way because right here, the dust comes up that way, it goes at a steep angle into the cyclone. The problem with turning it around this way is that my miter saw is over there, and if I put the Y this way, then this feed is going this way, which is the opposite of my miter saw. If I turn it upside down, we still have the same problem with the sharp angle here, and again, if I turn it this way, then the feed will have to go up and around the dust collector and everything. So I don't really know that there's gonna be a way that this will work. And to fix that problem, I'm gonna use multiple Ys, and these will be connected together by a third Y so that the planer and the joiner and the table saw can feed in that direction and the miter saw can feed from that direction. So I'm gonna get rid of this completely, redo that with PVC pipe, put it up on the wall, take it around the dust collector, and that should solve that problem. So the next problem we had was grounding this system out. And I'm not necessarily concerned due to an explosion or a hazard like that. That's definitely up for debate whether or not that can even happen. So give me your thoughts and drop a comment down below. But more than anything, I just wanna avoid the static whenever I go to touch this, that I get shocked every single time. Again, that's not necessarily a safety hazard because it's just static electricity, but it's really annoying to get zapped every single time that I go to check in the trash bin or I touch this by accident. And so as everyone mentioned in the comments on the last video, there could be a number of ways to ground this out. Now, where I think that I went wrong in that last video was that this copper wire I was hoping would ground the system out actually isn't grounded to anything. So to my understanding, connecting that copper wire to the frame of the dust collector doesn't really do anything. For one, the frame of the dust collector isn't actually grounded, rather the motor of the dust collector is grounded in the electrical system. Also, the frame isn't grounded because it's on either rubber or plastic wheels, which technically prevents the whole thing from being grounded. So I think I've come up with the solution, which was kind of a blend from all the comments, but I also just stopped and thought about this for a second. So I definitely don't know a whole lot about electricity, but from what I understand, PVC is an insulator, meaning that it does not conduct electricity. And because it's an insulator, that's why I have the static buildup. So whenever I get shocked from the static, that means that I'm the conductor and that the system is being grounded out through me. Now it's not going through the trash can because plastic is also a conductor and it can't flow through the trash can. And all this really got me thinking. So if I'm the conductor that grounds the system out and gets shocked whenever I touch this, why can't I just put a different conductor in place of me that touches the ground before I even touch the system? And so what I came up with was to use a chain to wrap around the cyclone and just let it touch the ground. And I guess my thinking with that is that the chain will short circuit the static onto the ground before I even touch the system. So I know that this is impractical because this is a giant chain, but I already had this laying around and rather than go get a new chain just to try this out, I just want to prove that this works. So we have a path from the chain going from the cyclone and the trash can all the way down onto the ground, which technically should ground this out. So all I'm really doing is replacing myself with the chain to provide a path for the static electricity to go from the cyclone and from the system to the ground. And so for the rest of the video, I'll show you how I redid the pipe to fix the Y and actually ground this out with a smaller chain. But for right now, let's test this out and see if this theory that the chain will ground the system out works. So it's my understanding that the static is generated by the wood dust and particles passing through the PVC at high velocity. I'm not sure how it works on a molecular level, so if you understand, please let me know in the comments. But what I do understand is that planing these boards does create static. Okay, so here's all the boards. These are six yellow pine boards. I ran them through the planer on each side. So now let's go back over to the dust collector and we'll see if that chain did anything. So if the chain acted as a short or a ground taking the static out of this, whenever I touch this, 
there should be no zap. So I'll take the camera up close. I haven't touched this yet and we'll see what happens. And so I just touched this thing all over in every place and there was no static discharge on me whatsoever. So this looks like it should work, but not actually prove that it does work. I'll take the chain back off, clean those boards again, and then see if I do get zapped by the static. And just so you don't have to listen to the planer the whole time, I just wanted to say that the dust cyclone that I installed in this video last week has been doing awesome so far. I've emptied the bin four times so far and there's very minimal dust in the bag. This is without the chain on, so there should be a static buildup on here. And whenever I touch this, because this isn't grounded out, I should get a little zap. So move the camera up close so you can hear this. All right, so that should take care of the static with getting zapped. Now let's fix the direction of this Y. We'll get rid of all this, do it with PVC up on the wall. Instead of doing it the lazy way, we'll do it the right way. So the first thing I needed to do was obviously to take everything apart so I could put the new components in. Now in the previous shot where you saw me put all that PVC pipe down, I actually ended up not using that and I kind of changed my plans halfway through. I originally planned on using three Ys connected together, but I kind of got to looking at things and realized that one Y with an elbow coming off of the other end would be a whole lot simpler than trying to do that. You'll notice here that I've got a blast gate on each side. So the pipe going off to the right will go to the miter saw and the pipe going to the left will go to my planer, table saw, and jointer. As far as the installation goes with the PVC, it's actually really easy to work with. Everything connects together fairly well and the only issue that I had was trying to connect the flex hose over top of some of the PVC. I was able to get it, it just took a little bit more effort than I wanted. Here's a look at everything after I have it installed. So like I said, going off to the right to the miter saw and then off to the left will be the table saw, joiner, and planer. Rather than use the giant chain that looks like it belongs on a tractor or a bulldozer, I just grabbed this small zinc chain and I wrapped it around the cyclone, the PVC, and as well as some of the flex hose, touching the trash can on one end and then going straight to the ground on the other end. And with everything finally hooked up and assembled, the only thing that was left to do to make sure that small chain would work was to test it out. So I ran the boards through the planer again, the same pine boards, and then I also had this big oak panel I'm doing for a separate build. I figured now would be a good time to plane it as well. All right, so after another round of planing, here is the moment of truth. So I'll touch the cyclone and see if we get any static. Absolutely nothing. So with adding the PVC pipe, fixing the old Y and adding the chain for that static charge. I think we're finished with this one. And actually, now that this is done, I'm really excited to finally have this done. I should have done this a long time ago. So not only does it look better, it'll be more accessible, but I also have more room over on this side in case I need to get here and clamp something down like a tabletop. So if you made it this far in the video, I just wanna say thank you for watching. If you commented on last week's video with either some tips or suggestions on how to make this better, again, thank you for those. And hopefully this will be a much better solution than what I had last week. So again, thank you for watching. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of everything that I did in this. That'll wrap it up for this one, but be sure to stay tuned next week. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, stay tuned for more.